AID Noise in Lightroom is a great tool that you can leverage to handle the noise that you're going to have in high ISO images. As I continue to develop my techniques with the Canon RF 100-500, I'm discovering the importance of AID noise. Since I'm often out shooting in lower level light situations, I need to maintain a higher ISO with this lens to avoid blurring. So as a result, I have noise in my photos. Not to worry, AID noise is here. Looking at the feature summary for Lightroom, it says, quickly remove noise from your photos. Quickly? Adobe and I may have a slight difference in opinion on speed, but let's keep going. This feature doesn't work for any super resolution files. And I noticed that when I merged photos into a pano, denoise doesn't work for them either. For panos, I have to continue doing my denoise manually after the fact. Now, if you want to join in and follow along this tutorial, then go to patreon.com forward slash EWJ. Click the join for free link, and then you can either uh, authenticate with Facebook or Google, whatever the choices are up there, or you can just enter in an email address, give it a password, bam, you're on the free tier. Look for my posting from June 16th, 2024, and you'll find the sample image. Looking at this close-up of an elk that I took at Grand Canyon National Park, I am really impressed with the level of detail that I was able to capture with the Canon RF 100-500 mounted on a Canon EOS R. Something that helps wildlife photos really stand out is that bokeh effect in the background. Take a look at this. Zooming out, we can see this beautiful bokeh effect surrounding the elk so there's no distracting elements taken away from my subject. But if I look closely, let's zoom in. I can see there's some noise. Now, I know here in the YouTube video, it might be a little hard for you guys to see the noise. Trust me, there is noise in there, and we're going to deal with it. Let's leverage the AID noise. So I'm going to go over here to develop mode, and I'm going to scroll down here to the noise, er the noise reduction area. I'm going to go ahead and click on the denoise feature. So we have a couple of tools that we can leverage here in the denoise window. Clicking anywhere in this preview window will turn off the denoise and we can see what it looks like. So there it is without the denoise and here is the effect after denoise has been applied. We can also use the slider bar so we can choose how much denoising that we want to apply. Denoising, the AI denoise does look at different elements of the photograph to try and get what's going to be appropriate, but you want to kind of sample different areas to make sure it doesn't take away too much detail. Now we can grab the photo and we can drag it around so we can see different areas. I can also hit the little magnifying glass to zoom out and then I can click on an area that I want to evaluate to see what it's going to look like after denoise. Whenever you're ready, just go ahead and click enhance. Your photo is going to be uploaded to Adobe for processing. It'll do its AID noise with your settings, and then it's going to be downloaded back to your computer as a DNG file. So we received our image back from Adobe. Let's zoom in and take a look at this. Looking at the bokeh background, it is so much smoother. I don't see the grain that I was seeing earlier. So that means I'm going to have a much more crisper image to work with. And now we can finish developing the image. Before we get there though, I want to show you a few more things. So we'll come back and address some of these darker areas on the elk before we produce the final product. So I have a couple of images I need to run through AI denoise. Let's go ahead and select one of these images and let's take a look at the AI denoise. So this gives you an estimated wait time of how long it's going to take for the whole upload, processing, and download to take. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm filming this kind of late afternoon on a Monday, so I'm not surprised there's a 15-minute wait time. I don't have that kind of time. So what I would do is... I would make the settings that would be appropriate maybe for a group of photos. And then what I would do is I would select multiple images. By selecting these multiple images, I can then go up here to the AID noise tool. And then 
I am going to be able to denoise all of these at the same time. So literally what I would do at this point, especially with a 15 mil weight on that one, see it's estimating for the three of these 30 minutes is what it's estimating. So what I would actually do right now is just kind of get up or start it and go do something else and come back later on and pro finish processing these images. All right, let's go back to our sample image and let's finish this thing up. So here's where we left off, and this is what I've got a problem with with this particular image, is that if we look carefully up here, I mean, this is a really dark area. Now, of course, guys, I always shoot in the raw format, so I've got some extra data to play with. What we're going to do is we're going to try and bring those out. we got to be careful these slider bars because we don't want to make the picture look fake in the process of doing this. So let's take a look over here. We're in our develop section. I'm going to go up to these slider bars. And let's play around a little bit. Now, I could try to increase the exposure. So let's see what happens when we increase the exposure. Yeah, that's not going to work. All right. Well, let's see if I can bring out the shadows. Well, I can only, it's okay. I can only do so much with bringing out the shadows. All right. So let's try clarity. Well, the clarity does do a little bit, but again, nothing here is really by itself is going to do what I need. So let's do a combination of the shadows and the clarity. And let's see what happens here. All right, I'm going to increase the clarity just a tad here, which does help. But again, I don't want to go too far. And then let's bring out the shadows, which in my opinion is a little bit less drastic on its own by slightly increasing the clarity and then increasing the shadows, I am seeing a little bit more detail in this area. I'm going to go ahead and just increase the clarity just a little bit more. Let's see what happens. Yeah, there it is, just a little bit brighter. Now I'm keeping an eye down in this area down here because I don't want this to start appearing fake in any way. Now right now it's looking pretty good. So there's our final image. Now I did the AI denoise first, so I had a clean slate to work on before I did my adjustments. You can do the adjustments first and then go back and do the AI denoise later. But the thing is, is that you might have to go back and play through your adjustments after it gets out of AI denoise. So I just choose to do the AI denoise first. Now, if you want to kind of get a before and after comparison, remember on Windows, you can just simply hold down the backslash key above the enter key and you're going to see what the image looked like before release and you can see what it looks like now. Even though Adobe advertised this as being quick, it still takes time. So if you want to denoise multiple files, you probably want to do it during a time frame when, you, when you're not going to be working at your computer. Just go ahead and select them all, choose a denoise level that you feel is going to work and just let them go come back later on and you'll find your images have been denoised. Next week, we're going to do another Lightroom tutorial where we're going to together develop a morning photograph from the Grand Canyon. I hope all of you take a few moments to subscribe to this channel and give it a thumbs up. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next week.